And good Friday morning, everyone. Taking a live look over Boulder this morning. Another warm day ahead for us, and you're not going to hear a single one of us complaining about it. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Jordan here alongside Corey, Ed, and Erica. So earlier we talked about 75 and sunny, and you were like, it's a song. Of course, mm. Erica comes in, she starts singing it. It's <laughs> legit. We sunny share one line. 75. <laughs> I went right there. You know that one. There you go. You can Hello, join country. the weather team now, officially. Thank you. There you go. That's I right. Was waiting. We're glad to have you aboard. Thank you. Right. We are going to be sunny and 70 today. Maybe an isolated storm, and then more of the same tomorrow. Sunday, maybe an isolated storm. Lots of sunshine Monday, Tuesday, maybe 80 on Wednesday. We got some great weather coming yeah. our way. As we said a couple of weeks ago, we have a long stretch of nice weather, and it looks like it's holding true. Yay. So yesterday, we had maybe a few scattered showers and thunderstorms just depending on where you were. They were brief but heavy in some locations and then everything slowly moved out today pretty much more of the same. So as we take a look, we do have those clear skies around here right now. We have 46 degrees, so it's another mile morning. 39 would be the normal low. We're going to 75 today with an isolated late storm. 73 on Saturday, 72 on Sunday, maybe an isolated late storm. And look at this fair, warm and dry weather for your Monday with 74 degrees and sunny skies. 78 on Sunday with partly sunny skies and even Wednesday we could be pushing the 80 degree mark, Erica. I look forward to that, Ed. Thank you so much. It's nice when you get to deliver good news, right? Feels good. All right, let's come to me now. Yeah, let's talk about the drive because I actually get to give you guys some good news now. You ready? That crash we were following at South Van I-25 and 23rd Avenue has cleared out. As you can see, all lanes back open and moving. We were down to only one right lane open for some time. So quickly want to zoom in and show you the scene at this hour. Even though things back open and moving at 23rd, we're still slow going. We backed up to about I-70 and I-25. So you've got the red light, still about a 10 minute delay between I-70 and Santa Fe. So keep that in mind. Hopefully things continue to improve. We also have a closure between Morrison and Indian Hills on Highway 285. It's between Highway 8 and Parmalee Gulch Road at this hour. So something to uh, keep in mind and avoid. And then eastbound I-70 in Peoria is the third problem we're following. Drivers on Denver's roads can be dangerous in part due to other drivers. Nine News reporter Brandon is right now along I-25. Brandon Denver police want people to think twice about their actions. Yeah, exactly, Erica. Good morning to you. And that's because Denver PD has received more than 100 road rage calls since the start of the year. Now, CDOT, as well as DPD, they have partnered up to post huge billboard signs across I-25 as well in the city that say cage the road rage. That way people don't engage in these uh, road rage situations. So road rage can range anything from cutting people off, brake checking and acting aggressive enough to make other drivers nervous on the road. So since January 1st, Denver PD District 1 has received 110 reports for road rage or aggressive driving. Last year, in that same amount of time, they saw 123 calls. And then in 2021, that number was even higher with 150 calls. Now, while those numbers are dropping slightly over time, police did say that the calls are getting more severe. Five of those recent calls have involved a gun. They seem to be escalating in behavior. So depending on the nature of the incident would would kind of determine um, what the consequences would be. You know, if you do produce a firearm and, you know, felony menace someone that that can lead to jail time. Now, DPD did tell me that if you're caught in a road rage or you witness a road rage, they're asking you not to engage. Don't talk to that other driver. Just call 911 immediately. Brianna, we were talking about exactly that this morning. It's scary on the road to the point when you see somebody driving aggressively, you almost need to put on that calm music, whatever you need to do, keep yourself calm because we're covering too many tragic stories where it ends potentially sometimes even fatally for people that engage. Yeah, exactly. When I was talking to DPD yesterday, that's exactly what they were telling me. Pull off to the side of the road if you can get off the next exit and just try to calm down. That way you're not engaging in these road rage because like you mentioned, it could turn fatal. Exactly. All right, Brianna, thank you. Right now, police in Aurora are looking for a missing 10 year old. Aurora police say Hezekiah Pope left a friend's house yesterday afternoon and never came home. He was last seen at a home on Granby Street near Chambers and Green Valley Ranch Boulevard. He was wearing a multicolored army style jacket, a black shirt with red writing and blue pants. If you have seen him, you are asked to call 911. 
Today, the trial of a woman accused of killing her 11 year old stepson is nearing its end. Closing arguments are scheduled in the trial of Letitia Stauk. Anusha Roy is following this story for us and Anusha, this trial has been going on for the past month. Yeah, after weeks of testimony today, both sides will be making their case one final time before the case goes before the jury. Letitia Stauk is charged with first degree murder in the death of her 11 year old stepson Gannon. He was reported missing in January of 2020. Prosecutors say Stauk stabbed and then shot Gannon in his bedroom and dumped his body under a bridge in Florida. Stauk has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. The trial is moving forward this morning in El Paso County Court. Closing arguments are set for 8:30. Of course, we will be watching and we'll keep you updated. All right, Anusha, thank you. Still no charges against a man who turned himself in after a deadly shooting at a Tesla charging station in Edgewater. In fact, Edgewater police say the man has not been arrested and no charges have been presented to the district attorney. Police have not shared his name or the name of the victim. Police will only say the investigation is still underway into the shooting at the Edgewater Public Market, including what led up to it. Denver is preparing for another surge of migrants from the southern border. There is already a significant increase in arrivals daily. More than 215 migrants arrived in Denver yesterday alone. That's close to the number of people we saw in late December and January when arrivals peaked at 271 people in one day. This is something immigration experts have been expecting for months with the end of Title 42 looming. It allowed authorities to turn away certain migrants at the border. We asked Denver Mayor Michael Hancock if the city is ready for another surge. We are already communicating with partners. We're already trying to determine how best we will respond uh, to that surge. I've talked to my counterparts around the country. They're already seeing a surge, um, and so there's a great deal of concern. Right now, Denver is housing more than 560 migrants in city and non-city facilities. Medical professionals who provide abortion services and gender affirming care got more protections under state law with a recent uh, recently passed bill. Hospitals and clinics don't have to provide that care, sometimes to the surprise of patients. A bill nearing final passage in the House would require medical providers to disclose which services they do not provide. The bill's Democratic sponsors point to services like tube tying and vasectomies, gender affirming procedures, and end of life care. It's a problem patients may run into at Catholic hospitals, which ban those procedures based on religious guidelines. The bill would require hospitals to disclose online and to patients any services that they deny for non medical reasons. A bill heading to the governor's desk would establish a statewide limit on contribution to candidates in local elections. It caps contributions from individuals and political parties at $400 and also caps small donor committee donations at $4,000 in municipal elections. The bill also comes with a number of records and reporting requirements as well. It would not apply to Denver, which has its own election finance rules. This year, the two mayoral candidates in the runoff, Mike Johnston and Kelly Bruff, have collectively raised more than $6.8 million. The law wouldn't apply to Denver because it's a home rule city with its own campaign contribution limits. Colorado Springs is also a home rule city but doesn't have its own limits. The bill would apply there unless the city chooses to opt out.